Hey everybody, welcome back to Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Matt Bamonte on the uh, NRG series. We're hanging out here. Let's take a look at our players to watch leaderboard here. And we've got, so check it out. Everyone's kind of in the middle of the pack. One and one, except for Jesse Robkin. Holding strong at two and zero. Again, Mac Endress, Connor Mullally, Zoe, Will, Raj, Adam, and Zach all at one and one. So they're vying for those ever important points on our end of the year leaderboard. Uh, but let's talk about the player who is 2-0 and o currently, Jesse Robkin. Now, she's been a mainstay on our series for quite some time now. Uh, she's 26, a playwright. Uh, she has six NRG series top eights with two wins. It's a pretty decent conversion rate, not 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 the worst. Uh, let's see. So the hot take, quesadilla with salsa is the same thing as a grilled cheese and tomato soup. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I'll let the experts get into that. But uh, yeah, that's awesome seeing Jesse uh, moving up on that leaderboard, which we will talk about too. Again, this is updated as of the end of the event this morning. So uh, Connor Mullally at 173, Zach Allen at 172. Now Jesse is kind of, um, you know, the dark horse, as they would say, in this race. Now she is again 2-0. and oh. Those other players that are ahead of her are 1-1. One and one. So there's a shot that she could uh, lock up the player of the year. Now, if she uh, if she gets there, maybe with a win today, would be uh, pretty impressive stuff. So a lot of drama still to unfold here as we continue through our Swiss rounds. It sounds like the players are getting ready to get started. So I'm going to send you back down to Joe and Dom for round number three here in Louisville. Okay, we are back. We got Nathan with Mono Green Devotion and Jesse with Mono White Humans. So a departure for Jesse, who has been playing Arclight Phoenix for months, I would say, right? And uh, switching teams here, Mono White Humans. Yeah, Jesse is someone who is perfectly willing to jump around. She thinks that a particular deck is going to be well positioned for a weekend. And I know that she has been pretty high on this Humans deck uh, over the past few weeks and months. So not really shocking to see her uh, make that switch. Also, I think Phoenix uh, was right. It was at the top of the format for a little bit. And then I think the opinions of it have kind of cooled a bit, uh, have come back down. And so it's just one of the many good decks you can play at this point and not the, the default front runner. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Lotus becoming slightly more common is an abysmal matchup for Phoenix. So that's maybe enough right there. Certainly, I know in, in her group of, of Magic and Patriots are several that have picked up Lotus lately. So. That may have been an influence also. That's uh, the other thing too, right? Is if your friends who you think are some of the better players in the room, you're going to have to beat some of them to win the tournament. If mm -hmm. they're playing, maybe your worst matchup in the format, well, that doesn't bode well. And so now we get to uh, to Kipler, your friends, as the kids used to say, and play a deck which seems to be well positioned against Lotus, but I think maybe yeah. that matchup is closer than people give it credit for as well. Yeah, I, I think White is, is solidly favored there. Okay, we have a pause here. And I think uh, Chat picked up on this before I did, but I do think I visually agree with them that Jesse Robin actually accidentally drew eight cards in the opening hand there. So a judge has already been notified. And we'll get this straightened out. So Nathan, I'm going to look at the opening seven while we wait a minute here for um, a... Uh, minor penalty to be assigned uh and so while we yeah, wait that way back here in the booth so dominic harvey joe is um my last round uh for the moment and then uh, mason clark will be in uh starting in round number four but uh good good day so far we started off with the uh the modern semis and finals i think that was probably as exciting as we could have hoped for honestly yeah, really thrilling conclusion to that. Uh, we saw someone with really kind of blazing their own path with their deck, which they have put faith in over uh, many months at this stage and deliver on that once again. And we'll be seeing uh, seeing Derek Davis in our uh, in our 2022 championship coming up in January. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so Jesse is shuffling and representing here so we can go back down to the table and pick up the beginning of round number three here jesse in a battle for the player of the year uh currently uh a little bit adrift of the leaders but a a deficit that is easily able to be made up with a strong performance 
if Connor and Zach Allen do not finish well this weekend. So here is an actual seven card hand for Jesse, which looks like only one land there. Now, I don't know uh, what the penalty actually would be for uh, calling a judge on yourself for drawing a card opening hand. I assume it's probably a force mulligan, uh, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, okay, we are. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and get a confirmation from yeah. our from our table spotter as to exactly what happened there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like Jesse is. See when the shuffling slows down. Uh, is starting on six cards. Yeah, and waiting for Nathan to okay, confirm so his choice as well. Okay, and here we go. We are our other choice for everyone, and Nathan with. Uh... My chosen forest artwork. So good job. We're in agreement on that. Kindred spirits leading into, well, it only goes so far though, because that's not the elf I would have chosen. But what are you going to do? No. No. Here we go. At second bodyguard. Well, what Elvish Mystic yeah. uh, floats your boat? Oh, well, to start with, I mean, well, okay, that's a Mystic. Sure. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking Llanowar. So yeah, never mind. Maybe that's the only option. I don't know the alternate arts. Yeah, that, that I just this saw is that. probably the most uh, yeah, flashy I Elvis Mystic you can get your hands on. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. So we add Elf into Kiora into Othanissa here. And because Othanissa starts with such an extreme loyalty count, it actually is going to survive these bodyguards unless Land Plus Dolly's Lieutenant comes down. And okay, second forest. Ooh, not only does it not match the first, that's not even a good look at forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise, an excellent start for for Nathan and mm -hmm. Jesse missing that all-important second land. And this is a matchup where speed is of the essence. You really cannot afford to stumble. Um, and so I think we're going to see Jesse falling behind pretty quickly here if Nathan has any reasonable follow-up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the uh, most of the green creatures are going to be tough to tangle with for these bodyguards. Nathan does have a Karn in hand uh, as well as that land. And actually, I think the full set, he has Old Growth Troll and Cavalier of Thorns. Jesse determining, are these creatures going to attack Kiora, or are they going at Nathan? This is a really tricky dilemma that the Green Deck puts you in, because, as you said, Kiora has so much loyalty that if you, you, you spend your time attacking it down, that's often six, seven or more damage you could have dealt mm -hmm. uh, to your opponent instead, which, if you're playing an aggro deck against uh, what is effectively like a combo deck, a ramp deck, uh, that that damage is very important. All right, so Nathan here with options. Uh, both green creatures castable here. Uh, casting the Cavalier would require the tapping of the Elf. Yep, there we go. That's what we're going to see, plus the Kiora loyalty leading into the Cavalier of Thorns. Card drawn from Kiora, and then we see the trigger go off here. So Jesse will be able to kill the Kiora at the cost of a Bodyguard this turn, but... I mean, that's it's a rough yeah, spot to be in, even though Nathan misses. It's like a, a full whiff on yeah. the Cavalier. But... Yeah. I, I don't think Nathan has the right to complain in, in no. this scenario, though. No, probably not. It's probably just fine with the way things have developed so far. And Jesse will trade off a bodyguard for the Kiora. But a very minor victory to be sure as she is struggling to develop here. And Nathan has, well, loses Kiora, but Cavalier plus Nykthos. Okay, here's a second land for Jesse. All right. And Athalia. So something to be encouraged about. Yeah, I, I expect too little too late. It seems like Nathan kind of has everything in order here. We're going to see... A slightly more expensive kind of great creator, or maybe just the Ogre Throw actually as well, if he wants to kind of fortify his board a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's Nykthos activation for what looks like five mana. Which is conveniently the cost of Card and Great Creator. Well, without much left over to be able to wish and then play something as a follow-up. Yeah, so we could kind of stagger that over two turns, or we mm -hmm. could play the troll now, which that's a nice investment for your devotion on the following turn. 
uh, adding three to that count there. So could see that instead. Nathan going to check the sideboard just to see what options we're working with. And we can do that ourselves. Yeah. So these, the these... mono green sideboard at this point has been pretty, pretty optimized. You see maybe one or two slots that are up for debate, um, mm -hmm. but the, the core 12 to 13 cards, you can pretty safely pencil in there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Jesse is fully aware of what those cards are as well. All right. So here is an oath, which uh, costs two mana. Leaving Nathan with three available. So that is still, <clears throat> that does line up with your play of the old growth troll for the turn. And an elf, which can be cast off the elf. So Nathan can still deploy uh, both creatures. And yeah, set up for quite a bit of mana available for the next turn. Yeah, there we go. So a pretty impregnable position, I think. And then we have the Khan as a as a menacing, so I think we'll finally uh, stand the door shot here. Mm -hmm. All right, Jesse counting up the devotion. We can do the same. Looks like two for the elves, three each for the Cavalier and Old Growth Troll, and one for the Oath of Nissa. That's nine plus extra land and the elf mana. So Nathan able to do almost anything he wants next turn, even despite the Thalia attacks. Never want to give up, though. Jesse will add Thalia's Lieutenant to the board, grow the creatures a little bit, but they still can't rumble with the, the significant green creatures. And now it's just up to Nathan to choose the direct way to, correct way to proceed here. So leading off with yet another Cavalier, and then if we hit nick those off this then which it looks like we did then we just get to get another even bigger burst of mana culminating in uh khan for really whatever takes your fancy at this point right i mean options certainly would include uh sky sovereign um maybe Siskate leveler if nathan's playing that um I mean, when your opponent is stuck on two land against godfire statue is an option even though it wouldn't necessarily normally be the ideal play against a white deck All right, here is the Karn. And I think any of Sky Sovereign, Cityscape Leveler, which it looks like it's a choice, is mm -hmm. going to seal the deal. Yeah. I I'm impressed that Jesse is still kind of sticking around to see what's, yeah. what's going on here. I would have uh, <laughs> probably packed it in quite some time ago at this point, but Jesse yeah. is built different, as the kids say. Yeah, I'm in agreement there. I, I would have given up already, but you know, for every game that you, for every couple dozen games you stay in that look hopeless like this, maybe you win one, and that's still, I mean, that's still worthwhile. You have a power stone now. It's all coming together. Yeah, I mean, maybe that maybe that's the key to unlocking her victory here, but uh, it doesn't actually <laughs> look that way. No. I think Nathan also going into these uh, sideboard games with the mono green deck, you have two or three flex slots in the main deck that you can do with as you see fit. And that's really the extent to which you can customize it. Uh, and Nathan going with probably the best use of those slots against uh, mono white in Love Truck Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a card which if you're trying to outrace the mono green mirror, maybe is not up to snuff. But if you just want to keep pace with the aggro decks, present uh, this, big, this big blocker, which also the the adventure half creates a white token, which is crucial for surviving both the elements, uh, mm -hmm. then that, that's a card that, especially on the draw, can maybe let Nathan uh, break serve and keep out there. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and bring up the deck list now. Um, we can start with uh, Nathan. Nathan's green deck. It's, I mean, all the green decks are fairly stock, except for, as Dan was explaining, the two kind of main deck option cards, which are Love Shark Beast in this case. You can see the sideboard, which consists solely of 
artifacts to wish for with Karn. Now, looking over at Jesse's Mono White deck, we see uh, probably pretty much the same thing we saw from Harrison Fang last round. And what do we like in the sideboard here? Well, Declaration in Stone I think we like... can play a role, picking off a couple of these big creatures at once. Yeah, we, we like removal. Right. We like uh, Skyclave Apparition, D Declaration in Stone. The model of the Skyclave is actually pretty interesting too. Mm -hmm. uh, Cavalier of Thorns does have reach, so it can soak up one of those attacks. But otherwise, you know, if you have uh, an Adeline to pair with that, is ideal. But even just a big Hopeful Initiate or something like that, you can load up candles on something with Luminar Castament. Uh, the, the more can you know, break open an otherwise uh, stalled board state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Certainly I can. Do you reach for portable hole here? I mean, it wipes out the mana generators, but nothing else. Uh, also, to deploy it, you're giving up the, your own mana of being able to deploy creatures. So I'm not sure you're netting a whole lot there. It, it's tricky. You, you kind of you, you kind of feel obliged to, but then when you do, you don't even feel that good about it for mm -hmm. the most part. So uh, that, that one I'm less sure about. And the question then becomes, well, what are we cutting to make room? Because yeah. this deck really relies on having that critical mass of creatures. You want these additional removal spells. And then this is one of the matchups where Brave the Elements really shines. So uh, I'm sure exactly what is going to make room for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Jesse, once again, finding the uh, opening hand actually not up to par. And so does Nathan after some thought. So both players are going to mold a six here, which is, I believe, actually where we started off game one as well. Yeah. Hopefully this game uh, will be a little more competitive. Mm -hmm. Get to see what the matchup usually looks like. So while they're shuffling up here, we'll go ahead and bring up the schedule for Nerd Rage Gaming for early next year. We have the championship that we've mentioned a number of times that players are trying to qualify for. By the end of the day, we'll have the 16 known. Um, that is January 14th, 15th. It is Pioneer and Modern. That is invite only. Uh, the three open enrollment events that are scheduled for the first half of next year so far are March and June in Chicagoland, uh, Mondon, Illinois, uh, and then May in Minneapolis. So that is on tap. If you are interested in receiving notifications when the broadcasts go live, hit the follow button. Uh, if you plan on watching, if you plan on showing up in person to play, well, excellent. We will see you there. Uh, but yeah, we are going to wrap up the 2022 qualifying season today, and then we'll start all over again next year. So if you yourself want to see if you can contest in the next year's championship, well, those three events are where you start. Jesse looking at six here, two land. I mean, that's a good place to start. And Nathan with a mix of mana and accelerators, and we're underway. No one drop, though. Oh, there's my good-looking elf. That's the one I remember from when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, it, it's whiteboarded. How do you feel about that? I, I feel like it's perfect. I mean, when I started playing, all the cards were... All, okay, all, okay. all the revised cards we, we, we started playing with were whiteboarded. So, yeah, whiteboarded feels like home to me. All right. So, Oath of Nyssa will give Nathan some selection. Uh, we see... So another point of customization of the deck, customization of the deck, we see that Nicol Bolas, but not going to be the selection. Yeah, a slow start for Jesse, and I, you would love to have that troll on on turn two uh, mm -hmm. naturally instead. But this is, you know, this is an acceptable uh, buyout. Yeah, indeed. All right, so Dahlia didn't. I mean. Slowed down Nathan's development maybe last game, but didn't have a, a huge impact. He was still able to deploy pretty much everything he wanted. Uh, now we're four, five, six, seven. An issue here, unclear what it is. Jesse appears to have four cards in hand plus three permanents. That's seven. That should be the right number. Since she was on the play. Yeah, so if we start with six, that's five up to six, five, four, and then. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're receiving word that potentially um, Jesse may have actually mulligan to five, but accidentally started the game with six. Um, that's what we're hearing from the, the from the, the spotter. Unclear. Uh, clearly, something is wrong, uh, and it does seem to include the so involve the total number of cards that Jesse has access to. All right, so this might take a moment. So we'll come back here and uh, get that sorted out. In the meantime, all right, so we have uh, we have this championship coming up uh, next month that uh, these players are, are casting for, and it consists of Pioneer and Modern. Uh, in the past, the uh, the event has also included Legacy or and, and or Limited. So, Dominic, if you're playing in a championship event, how many events do you want to have? We talked earlier about how many events do you want to keep track of just in general as far as playing. But if you're preparing for a specific weekend, what do you think is the ideal? Do you want limited in the field? Do you want legacy? Do you want popper? Like what what if you yeah. what do you want to play? <laughs> I don't want popper. I can tell you okay. that much right now. Uh limited, I I'm not naturally a, a limited gamer. I, I think it would be fun to have some kind of like high stakes competitive limited in the rotation somewhere. And I think the the nice thing about having that at a smaller tournament is you can, well, first of all, you can draft and then you can really follow the drafts and cover someone's draft in depth. And it's easier to focus on what happened in this part versus that part and mm -hmm. some of the individual decks. And so uh, I think limited, certainly covering limited, I think presents its own challenges. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's the ideal setting for it, as opposed to, you know, like day one of a sealed Grand Prix, for example, where you, you kind of have no idea what's going on or what the storylines are. And then even on day two, you're kind of jumping between different players and different mm -hmm. parts, and it, it can it can be hard to follow sometimes. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Limited covering limited in a large event um, is very different than covering limited where you can track where you basically are playing all the matches within maybe the players that you watched draft. So um, I know there were there were some advocates for having limited in the championship like we did last year, but in the end, it kind of came down to at least for this year is that the feeling was that a lot of the players don't really want it. Some of them do. Some of them, I mean, some of them want legacy. There's probably some vintage fans out there. Um, you know, if there's any in the Midwest, oh, yeah. well, we'll let's, just... let's get some vintage in there. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> why not? But um, but no, Pioneer Modern is kind of, part of the feeling was that most of the work done to qualify for the championship was in Pioneer and Modern. So it seemed a little bit of a curveball to throw out other formats for these players to die, to to have to navigate right at the end. So that's what we ended up with. Pioneer and Modern. And here we are back at the table and we'll see. Okay, it's a hidden card error. So what happened was is Jesse's going to have to reveal her hand. Uh, Nathan will be able to choose one that goes back. This is what happens when you end up with an extra card in your hand accidentally. The opponent basically, uh, to avoid any potential advantage gained by Jesse, uh, Nathan is the one that chooses which card goes back. And uh, so can we get where is this actually the result of what was in effect uh, a mulligan to five that was actually drawn as six. So, okay. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, so Jesse's hand being corrected uh, mid game back to it's what was supposed to be a five card opener. And then we'll proceed from there. So when uh, this shuffling is completed, I believe we're untapping on Jesse's third turn. And you can see as can Nathan as well, everything that she has access to here. And, uh, Okay, we're good to go. It would be sad if, after all of that, we just get another kind of anticlimactic turn three cavalier into God yeah. knows what else. But let's let's have something a little more competitive here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lumeric Aspirant, Thalia gets buffed, and Thalia gets in there. Uh, so Jesse. Third in line right now for the player of the year race, but I believe we said uh, in Matt's intro, the two players ahead of her both lost once already in this event. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out over the course of the day, but she is certainly still in the running. Got her spot yeah, she, in the championship locked up, but can she take home player of the year? Yeah, she needs them to not have a, a good day at the opposite and for her to make a run herself. So it's always one of these rare situations, right, where you're rooting almost for the failure of these people who you've been playing with and against the, the entire year. But 
I mean, that, that's the that's the essence of competition, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that depends on your personality. For me personally, I have no problem rooting against people, even the ones that you know that I will know <laughs> if it's right. Like, that's sure they can fall, but if they got hit by a truck outside the venue, you know, or well, that's a little bit much. Maybe they just got you know, <laughs> um, pushed in the way there, and, and they they lost their deck or something. Oh, that's a shame. But um, all right, so. Yeah, and some people are, you know, just as happy if their friends do well as if they are, uh, and good for them too. I, I, I'm watching my back if we're ever competing for any kind of accolade uh, uh, at the same time. I'm just getting that on the record right now. Okay, here we go. Nathan continues to develop Kiora into play. Jesse says, "Yeah, that costs more." And. All right, maybe not the most rapid regression here for for Nathan. Just a a cycled oath here. Well, Nicholas has a habit. Yeah, they get things rolling though. I, I'm now. I gotta say, I'm now starting to look at your your player championship win in a whole different light. Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what kind of shady shit was going on there. But... <laughs> It was all the way above board. I mean, did you <laughs> did you see those matchups? I had good matchups. Across. I didn't need any help uh, that particular okay. weekend. Okay, but uh, yeah, anyway. sometimes. Sometimes. All right. So Cavaliers in uh, looking at five finds a forest, and just the general accumulation of resources here for Nathan is good. I'm going to be untapping it next turn with boatloads of mana. Do we know? Do we know that one card left in uh, Nathan's hand? Is it a, a useful payoff for ten trillion uh, green mana? I believe it's a Karn. So the answer is yes. So yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, Cavalier roadblocking for at least one more turn, unless there's Lieutenant, as his Aspirin can pump Thalia up to a five power. And Cavalier of Thorns, in addition to its awesome coming to play trigger, it's pretty useful death trigger. It's also just huge. Yeah, this is the card that really makes this version of the deck possible. We've seen, even going back to the first days of Pioneer, Monogreen Devotion uh, was the, the default best deck to, mm -hmm. to kick off that, uh, that new format. Uh, and it's really taken a lot of different forms over time. And now this version with Cavalier and Somna Festival has become the go-to, and Cavalier is is a central reason for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk about uh, while Jesse tries to think about how to proceed here about how you know should a card in green be banned. Now let's leave that aside. But if you were to ban a card in green, if you had to, I feel like there's even a number of choices you could make that would dramatically slow the power of the deck down i mean you could for example you could get cavalier out of here i mean that would not maybe totally disable the deck but it would weaken it by a, a significant margin yeah you would force it to take on a different form and so you could mm -hmm. really take it out at the knees and ban nykthos and say well okay this is this has been a problem in so many forms so many times let's just get it over with let's get it done because maybe we're gonna have to at some point you could also say you know khan is the, the thing that enables these weird combo line to go over the top of everything and, and give the deck that that flexibility as well as that combo potential so you force it to play more of a fair game on the board instead lots of ways you could slice that up if you wanted to it seems like oh, that conversation has really receded in the past mm -hmm. few weeks where yeah a few months ago that was all the talk is do we need to ban something from monogreen maybe even something from from black red cut them both down to size now monogreen has really fallen off the map i mean it's looks like it's going to be three and in this tournament yeah um but you you know, I think back to Fort Wayne where I played three or four green mirrors and it was easily the most popular deck. It like I the, the format has learned and evolved a lot since then, and that, that's great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I am of the opinion, uh, and I feel pretty strongly about this that Pioneer does not need a ban. Uh, I and I agree with you that, that we see less talk about that now than we did a month ago, but I feel like the format evolving at its own rate, we're still going to see some changes and um. And yeah, and we don't necessarily need to make any dramatic changes. All right, Brave the Elements here to push through an attack. Uh, Kiora gets wiped out after bodyguards are to the board. And okay, Jesse's still fighting here.
elf. So that elf is effectively free, mm -hmm. and we're going to be making mana with Nicholas here, and we're going to be making a lot. So that's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that's that's not even counting whatever may or may not be off screen as well. Uh, so we're going to be able to play Khan and fetch maybe the leveler again. I assume it would be the default, but I guess we'll see. Okay, here we go. So, Old Growth Troll attached to a forest still counts for devotion. Plus everything else that's there. And yeah, Nathan's uh, going to think about this too. I'm sure Jesse's just like, oh, I hope your card in hand sucks. Maybe you're just bluffing. Can't it be Lair of the Hydra animate, even if it's tapped, and just waste your turn? But no. Uh, Nathan picks up the sideboard. And really, it's an embarrassment of riches there. I think mm -hmm. there are, you know, five or six cards in the monogreen all of which would uh, essentially lock this game up from, from this position. Yeah. So Nathan hasn't actually revealed the Karn yet. I'm not sure if Jesse knows this was in hand or not. Yeah, I wonder if... Is there any chance the, the leveler was shuffled in or something? I... I mean, that's not impossible. You're right about that. Uh, okay, maybe was... we're just double-checking before we actually uh, commit to this. Mm -hmm. All right, see that green die there? That probably represents, represents floating mana. Is that wood color on a maiden? I don't even know the artwork on that card, but that would fit what just happened. Yes, yeah, it is. It's blue color automated too. Maybe we can pop that one up on screen. So this will animate the Nykthos and untap it to, or a burst of additional mana. And I don't believe there's any more cards in hand, but they're okay. There's a storm of the festival in the graveyard. Yeah, th so. this, this card is very strange. You cannot actually get it in Brothers Wall Boosters. This is part of the, the Jumpstart uh, expansion that was kind of really released alongside that. Um, and yeah, this lets Khan un find a way to untap your Nikthos, essentially, and continue the chain going, make more mana, use that for something like a Storm the Festival, which here is going to find uh, looks like another Cavalier and an Ogre Thrall. Yeah, so it's looking increasingly unlikely Jesse's going to be able to attack him for damage without additional copies of Grave the Elements. Uh, and as long as this Karn is protected, then next turn, Nick, those, I don't know if there's any reason to count the mana anymore. Okay. So is there enough of board presence here that Nathan feels good on attacking here? It looks like that is the case, and Cavalier comes across for five. So the first dent in Jesse's life total this game. Okay, hopeful initiate uh, can actually activate other as there are three counters on Thalia, and more and more to come from Luminarch Aspirant. All right, and. This is an attack here? What, uh, what am I saying? I didn't see it. There's not another Brave the Element, so this is just... Maybe I Ganjo? Okay, that makes sense. Or maybe this is just the, the last the last hurrah, you know? We're char charging over the top, and then we, we know that not many of us are making it back alive.
Okay. Looks like it was a trade. Dolphins body guard for Wood Collar Automaton. And uh, Thalia got jumped by an elf, I think. All right. Well, we still have <laughs> another Nykthos was drawn, just in case Nathan needed more mana. And so this Karn... Uh, Jesse's almost dead on the board just from combat. I'm mean, not quite, but Let's see what comes up here from Karn, the great creator this time. Karn, I mean, kind of plays the same way in every format. If you have a bunch of mana available, you have this toolbox of cards. It does take up a good chunk of your sideboard, whether it's half or all of it in this case, but access to a lot of stuff. And the fact that you don't sideboard in some cases makes things simpler. So you can spend more mental energy on other aspects of the game. The most offensive thing about Khan to me is sometimes you don't even need to activate it for him to win the game by itself. <laughs> you know, that's static ability. If you, sure, that's true. if you rely on artifacts in any way, it's going to be a, a body blow. Mm -hmm. All right. Seascape level is the choice this time around. And as it often is, this will just wipe out the most powerful card on Jesse's board, which is, looks currently to be the Thalia. And while Hopeful Initiate can effectively disenchant the Leveler, that's... Oh, okay, it's actually the Luminarch Aspirant. So perhaps I'm willing to leave the Legendary Creature on the board. In case Jesse has another copy. Compared to the size of Nathan's creatures, it really doesn't make a difference anyway. This Thalia is going to get <laughs> ground under the Thieves' Leveler when it attacks next turn. Okay, and there is the Iganjo that you suggested might be there, and Old Growth Troll will join the forests at the bottom of Nathan's board, but Jesse falls to five, needing... Well, I mean, is there a card that even is relevant here? She's facing out an awful lot from Nathan here. The officer. We summon the cavalry... But I don't think they can. Uh, don't think they can rescue us from this position. Yeah. All right. Karn animates the power stone to knock it out of here. Right, here comes the attack. Uh, Jesse burns off some cavalry. I guess technically kill... cavalry yeah. come on horses, and there were, there were no horses in this deck. I'm, I'm sad <laughs> to report. It's Mutavolt as a horse. I'm sorry. I take that back. <laughs> yeah, Mutavolt always catches us and all the creature types on everything. All right. So most of the board gets eradicated here. It looks like Thalia is going to survive. Jesse drops to three, empty handed. Draws another copy of Vigon Joe. Attacks, kills Karn. <laughs> Nathan's like, I'll block with Nyxthos. <laughs> which gets Vigon Joe. All right. Well, certainly Jesse used all of her cards, but comes up. Well shy of beating Nathan against Mono Green Devotion, um, who really, it was more, we, we, could we say it was more a matter of the white deck just not functioning ideally in that match. I mean, no one dropped that game. I thought he did come down, but Nathan, you know, did his thing, chose his card targets wisely and just, just leveled the board basically. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I think one of why the numbers say is favored against green, but then Sometimes you look at the games and the green deck just does its thing and you, you wonder mm -hmm. how anything is favored against it, let alone, right. <laughs> let alone mono white. Yeah. But uh, again, when the green deck wins, that's what it's going to look like a lot of time. All right, let's get the backup match going here. Uh, that was a fairly long first match, so we're going to run through this. This is game one. We got Nathaniel Chandler on Simic Ramp versus Travis oh, okay. Williams on Instagram. So we wanted to get this one in because this is a bit of a fringe deck. This is not a Simic Ramp. This is Crusher Tentacles. This is... Sylvan Advocate and Tatiova with Awaken the Woods. There, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. So I was yeah. 
I was very keen to get this one uh, in front of the lights. I, I don't know when the last time I've seen Silvergate Advocate was. And was that um, was that the the flip coin, the Nissa planeswalker creature? They just got oh, we, we got a few different Nissas in here. Yeah, yeah we, got, <laughs> we do. We've got Flip Nissa. We've got Nissa who shakes the world bridge. That used to be a, a mainstay in Monogreen, and that one has really fallen by the wayside. But uh, glad to see that one finding uh, another home. Yeah, I love Flip Nissa. All right, here we go. Here's Travis Williams with Is It Phoenix, the more uh, standard deck out of this pairing, which is an understatement. Uh, you sit down. I mean, Sylvan Advocate, there's probably a fair number of people in this tournament that would have to read Sylvan Advocate. In fact, that probably stands for a number of the cards in Nathan's deck. <laughs> Gets attacked here. What do you even? What do you have to play around here if you're if you're Travis? On, as far as choosing to block with Ledger Shredder, I mean, you have no idea what's going to come out of this deck. <laughs> I mean, your opponent has Silver Advocate. They could have anything, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're Chandler, send that thing in confidently and put Travis to the test. All right, here is Knive Pitch Arclight Phoenix. So yeah, the is a Phoenix deck really humming along and doing its thing here. Off mm -hmm. a very nice start. I mean, this is the third one mana spell in this turn. Ooh, oh god, is. are we returning both Phoenix. Phoenixes? Wow. Okay, All so right. we <laughs> it, it looks like we are gonna watch a bloodbath instead of the cool uh Civic Crush deck doing its thing, but you know, that that, that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah, you, you get the cool deck on camera and then it just gets squashed. We'll see. Nathaniel Chandler, what do you got for us? All right. There's Nissa Basswood Ranger. Basswood Seer. Nissa something or other. Does turn over into a Planeswalker when you reach seven land. Um, so maybe we can pop that up for people that aren't familiar. When it comes to the plate, finds a forest. And on the back side, it, uh, it makes a 4-4 four -four legendary token, although I can't remember the name of the token. Uh, and then also can plus to just uh, basically... Draw a card, draw a land into play, or a card into hand. There you go. It is Vastwood Seer. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's exciting and that's great and everything. But Nathaniel Chandler needs an answer to uh, this Air Force of Travis Williams that is beating down here. Came out early on turn three, attacking again on turn four. For a not eight insignificant, power? Yeah. yeah, eight damage coming across. All right, Crusher Tentacles is drawn. Are we awakening the world anytime soon? Any Ashires in chat? No? Doesn't look like it. Seven, seven lands is a lot to ask for at this stage. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that, that is it. Travis Williams picks up game one. All right. So we'll let's I'm so mad, Joe. I'm yeah, so well, mad. Hey, hold what on. The, the, match isn't over <laughs> the match isn't over. We can still see it. We can still see this deck do a lot of work. Let's put this, Let's put the deck list up on the screen. So people can see what's going on in the Simic Grand. Feast your like, eyes upon this. Yeah. Boy, ole. All right. So we get Sylvan Advocate, and Basswood Seer, which wants six and seven land to play. Tatiova, which wants seven, I believe, to start animating and sending lands into the air. Uh, we have Awaken the Woods, which is a, a mythic from Brothers War, right? That's a new card that Yeah, makes this is dry spell that makes Dryad Arbors. Yeah, so yeah. these are lands and creatures. So they get buffed by Advocate. They trigger your Tatiova, your Nyssa, uh, their forest, right? So Nyssa is mm -hmm. going to double their, their mana generation. So that is the card that is kind of tying the whole room together. And then Crusher Tentacles uh, in conjunction with you know, Oath of Nyssa, Gross Barrel, and so on. You can search that thing uh, and just reset the entire board. And then because it doesn't bounce lands, if you have all of your awakened lands or your land creatures and so on, those things are going to stick around and, and do their job. Yeah, all right. Let's take a look at the... Phoenix deck of Travis Williams. Probably a lot more recognizable for almost every player. If you're just coming in um, new to Pioneer, this deck is normal. The other deck, not so much. Uh, we do see um, the standard package of Delve cards in the deck. And a new card, Brotherhood's End, as a 3 of in the sideboard, as a sweeper for small creatures or artifacts. Maybe Planeswalkers, whatever I guess you're worried about dealing with. And then we're going to go ahead and roll game two. No time to waste here. And we see Narset's Reversal in this Phoenix sideboard. That's a, another card that's going to be probably more present now that Lotus has shown its teeth in the metagame. Yeah, let's take a look at this uh, 
the sideboard of the Sonic deck, see what they have going on. So there are some Ethergast, Negate, Sogai Lantern, Mystical Dispute, and Shifting Ceratops. So actually, all 15 cards have some kind of relevance in the Phoenix matchup. I imagine we're just looking at the Mystical Disputes and perhaps the, the Sogai Lanterns as well here. All right, we'll see how Nathaniel chooses to run it here as Sylvan Advocate is into play again. And there's a Ledger Shredder, which can effectively block it for three more turns for the first three attacks. Attack. Put him to the test. Travis Williams giving this a thought here. And really, I mean, you're playing, you're in round three of a tournament that, you know, it has meaningful stakes. And you're playing against a deck where, I mean, maybe Nathaniel is, maybe Nathan, and Travis are friends and Travis knows everything that's going on in Nathaniel's deck. Or maybe he has to read 20 cards in the deck and uh, is somewhat taken aback by what he's for, facing here. Is it Growth Spiral gets cast? It, it does look like... Uh... Nathaniel beat uh, the Celestia Angels deck last round, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Like, that's a deck where you have enough time to build your own big board, and then Crush can just reset everything on theirs, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you can go way over the top. So maybe maybe that all makes sense. All right. Nissa finds an Aether Gust and goes to the bottom. Oh, this was a... Okay. So yeah. Travis let the Nissa resolve because he would rather Nathaniel have the forest than just redraw the Nissa next turn. Yeah, heads up move by by Travis. Right. There. right. A similar move that's sometimes done with Cavalier of Thorns. So the forest is picked up. So a card disadvantages trade for Travis there, but it does get rid of the Nissa permanently. And Lightning Axe will allow Connive there, clean up the hand a little bit, get his teammates out of there. No Arc Lights to discard this time. Oh, and there is Temporal Trespass to pair mm -hmm. with Galvanic Iteration in a few turns. We can keep the cards flowing. So here's... Okay, well, here's Treasure Cruise instead. Well, that also keeps the cards and flowing. take the chance. Yeah, we'll take the chance to do that. And now Opt will let us Connive. I imagine Phoenix heading away here. There it is. Resolving the Opt now. All right, and across for two. Travis being at 16. Let's see how many. Okay, we did have two steam vents. All right. All right, well, six land in play. We're in progress. Okay, there's Nissa. So now uh, lots it is of Nissa. Yeah. A card we really haven't seen as a centerpiece of a deck in quite some time at this point, but I, I don't know if this is Stockholm Syndrome or something, but I almost miss it, despite having it, you know, ruin me in standard for like four months back to back. <laughs> so all the usual tools in hand for Travis Williams here. Pieces of the puzzle, uh, Temporal Trespass, although... That's a mana commitment that's going to require quite a bit. doesn't look like that's likely to be able to come off this turn, but Travis checking out how many of those lands are actually forests for Nathaniel. All right, pieces on the stack. Not too bad there. Reveals an arc light and several desirable spells. So Travis will actually have to make decisions here on what he wants. And so ideally we would either with two phoenixes. So those can if I think returning those is just the absolute top priority at this point. If we can get those mm -hmm. back, they can take down this uh, shredder can start applying pressure upstairs and then we're basically back in the same position we were in game one. So, yeah, it looks like we've we've assembled that chain here. It sure Lightning does. Axe. Yeah. And here Taking we go. Taking down the forest. And well, yeah, things they... looked 
promising there for Nathaniel, but a solid turn from Travis Williams clears the board entirely. Yeah, this seems like a really rough matchup for Nathaniel where you know the, the removal is pretty good against you. Uh, they have a bunch of big flies that are tough to deal with. And also the galvanic trespass engine just kind of goes way over the top of uh, a lot of what you're trying to do yourself. Okay, uh, this is, is it Nissa's Renewal? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so ramp is, three, yeah. Yeah, gain seven life, get three basics. So you curve that into a Awaken the Woods for eight or what have you like that. That's a pretty, uh, pretty impressive sequence, but there is not much time left to do something like that. No, there surely is not. So gain seven life, uh, but facing down... Eight damage on the board, and if the temporal trespass finds its way onto the stack, then it could be a lot more. Oh, wow! Phoenix number three. And I think a second was that a second trespass. Yeah, it looks like it. And yeah, yeah so we, we think of this big flashy galvanic iteration trespass sequence. Sometimes you just draw two of them and cast two of them, and that, that gets the job done itself. Yeah, that's an attack for 12. I don't know if that's seven gain last string I add to the tally or not. So well, either way, Nathaniel is vanquished, and Travis Williams will pick up the win and advance to three and up with the Phoenix deck. Congratulations to him. Uh, moving along through the event here. And yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's kind of what happens. Fringe decks, there's a reason why the tier decks are the tier decks. is because they're just strong overall against a wide variety of opponents. All right, that is going to do it for my portion of the morning. Dom will be back uh, for round four in a few moments with Mason Harvey. So stick around. Mason Clark. 